Now we need to update our delete views to be able to handle HTMX. The first and obvious one is this object lookup here. So what we wanna do is instead put it into a try block and it's gonna be roughly the same lookup itself, but now we just do objects.get and then the ID and request user, okay? And then we'll go ahead and say accept and obj equals to none. Okay, so this should look very familiar from some of our views. But now what I'm gonna do is say if obj is none, then I'm gonna go ahead and raise the HTTP 404. Unless, of course, if request.htmx, then I'm gonna return a HTTP response of simply not found, All right? Simple enough, that gives me some HTMX settings or preparing for HTMX. Then of course, we've got this success URL still after it's finished. Now what I'm gonna do is if request.htmx, then we're gonna go ahead and return that same sort of response, but this time we'll go ahead and say success. I could leave it like that. That would actually remove some aspects of it. But what I wanna do instead is I actually want to redirect. So I'm gonna go ahead and say headers equals to the HX redirect. And we're gonna redirect it to that success URL. And then we'll pass in those headers, okay? So naturally this same idea can be passed in down here as well to the actual ingredient detail view. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna copy pretty much all of it and paste underneath. Okay, so the first thing is the recipe ingredient is gonna be what we're looking up here now. So we'll change that one. Okay, and then the next thing is, well, our success detail view is just slightly different. That's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of all these. So before I even implement HTMX, let's just make sure that both of these are still working. So let's go ahead and jump into our recipes. Let's click on one that we wanna delete and delete it. Sure enough, it is deleting these items. Great. Now let's go ahead and jump in to any given item that actually has ingredients. Let's go ahead and add some ingredients here. Save it. Okay, roast beef, I'll go ahead and hit remove. What do you know? It brings me in, we're good to go. Okay, so now I've got that delete view, okay? So in the case of maybe the recipe ingredient instead of the detail view, perhaps we want it in the edit view. I'm actually gonna leave it in the detail view for the success reverse, right? So that after we do delete something, because perhaps we wanna just have all of the editing happen right in that detail view. Maybe we don't need a full on view for editing now that we have HTMX. But let's go ahead and first off implement the recipe delete view itself. And so we're gonna go into the detail and our intuition should tell us that this is pretty much the only element we might need to change. So to do that, we would say something like hx post, and we would actually send a post request to that URL. And that's what we've wanted, right? So in our view, our detail view, it's looking for a post request to actually delete it, right? So back in here, we can actually also confirm this in this. So we can do hx-confirm and say, are you sure you want to delete this, okay? Or of course we can say the object name as well. So we can do obj.name, which is really nice. Now we can also add in a, another item here and say hx-trigger and just say click, okay? So when we delete it, it will actually go away, or hopefully. So let's go ahead and click on one of these, one of our actual recipes, click on delete. Hey, what do you know? It actually confirms with me on whether or not I want to delete this. We'll go ahead and say, okay. Hmm, nothing seemed to have happened. So if we inspect the element here, we go into console, we see this you know, response status code 403, forbidden. This is not allowed. Hmm, why is that? Well, up until this point, every time we did a hx-post, we were using a form. So we already had the CSRF token in there. 
Now, this request does not have that token. So we need to add it in manually. So one of the ways we can do it is by adding it right on this request here. So HX headers, and we can set this equal to a, basically a JSON string, which is gonna look something like this, X C S R F token. And then we pass in another string and inside of here, we use two curly brackets of CSRF underscore token. This is another way to generate it. And it usually generates it in line like this. Whereas this other one actually creates the form element. Okay, so just a slightly different way to create it. Okay, so now we can add that header in and let's take a look. I go to delete this, we say, okay, what do you know? Now it actually works. Okay, so this is actually not great because we hit save. Now, whenever I try to reuse this again, I have to remember to put the headers on here. So I don't wanna to have to remember that every single time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the current method for adding that header in on every HTMX request. So if I end up using HTMX, it will include that header in here. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and update a script. So it's document.body.add event listener, and it's HTMX colon config request. And like we saw before, it will take in an event. That is the argument for any event listener. So this could be its own function. And then it's event.detail.headers, and it's that same header. So x dash CSRF token. And then we're gonna set it equal to the CSRF token here. Okay, so if you know JavaScript well, you're gonna be like, hey, I wanna move this elsewhere. Uh, but the idea is we want it to be on the template itself so that this will actually render based on the user's session. There are ways around this, but I think this is a good way to do it. Okay, so now this might change over time. And if it does, let us know in the comments below as well as you know, send a pull request on our GitHub account. Uh, but the general idea is this will now add that header so we no longer would need to do this. Of course, if this fails for you, then just add the header directly. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that, that both of these things and save them. And let's try this again. This time I'm gonna go ahead and delete it and we'll say, okay, perfect. So it actually did delete it. So let's go back into our other method and we'll go ahead and edit in here the ingredients, right? And so yet another thing that we can verify, so we could do this exact same thing, ingredient inline, and I'm keeping that A tag so it's a fallback. So if for some reason HTMX is turned off by way of JavaScript being turned off because that's how HTMX works, then we wanna make sure that that button is still working. So HX dash post, again, to the object URL itself. And this time HX dash trigger, click. And now the question is, do we want to confirm or should I just delete? I probably wanna confirm because it's gonna most likely take me to a different place, right? So let's go ahead and add another ingredient and you know some random ingredient here. And if I hit remove, it does remove it, but then it reloads. It doesn't necessarily do it in line. Um, now there are ways to make it happen in line, but we didn't do that because we instead just you know completely removed the element. So we'll see how to do it in line in just a moment where it doesn't actually redirect at all. That's kind of what we want. But the next question is, do we want to actually confirm on here? Now I think with something like ingredients, yeah, I do want to, because I think it's so critical to this and you might accidentally hit delete. So HX confirm and delete ingredient. All right. So how do we actually delete this in line now? All right, so if we had it in here, what is it that we do? Let's go ahead and add a new ingredient that we wanna delete. Let's just make sure the confirm is in there. I hit cancel, nothing happens. So how do we just remove it? Well. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in to our view. 
And instead of having this right here with my recipe ingredient view, I'm just gonna get rid of those headers. I'm actually now not gonna have those headers on there and just write out success. So we run this again, I hit remove, success. So it actually changed the button to success, right? Um, and so that's not necessarily ideal. We wanna actually change the entire thing to be removed. Or I can just say ingredient removed as a string. Now granted, we could also render out the entire context or other things if we were so interested, uh, but I'm just gonna use ingredient removed. So now let's jump back in to our template. And in here, if you recall, we have the option to do hx-target, and we can target any CSS element. In this case, I'm gonna target the ID. This is a CSS selector, of course. And I'll do hx-swap, and it's gonna be outer HTML. So in other words, replace this entire block with whatever the response is from this, and do it based off of this ID. Pretty cool, I think. Okay. So now let's jump in to our edit again. Let's add an ingredient here, roast beef, 123 pounds, save it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on remove. It's gonna ask me if I wanna delete it, of course, and boom, ingredient removed. Okay, cool. I really like that. So the other part of this is, hey, what if we went back into our view and we want to be a little creative. And we said, oh, let's do a span. And this time I'll go ahead and give a style of you know color. And we'll just do some light gray. Now, don't worry if you're not doing this, but let's just see what that would do. So we save that. Of course, that's inline HTML. Let's go ahead and add an ingredient. Of course, I could always delete another one. Okay. Go to remove, yes, hey, right in line, ingredient removed. Okay, so yeah, obviously this works and it works just fine. Um, realistically, I'd probably actually render something here. I would render a inline delete call. So recipes, uh, ingredient, inline delete response. Something like that. I mean, it's very, very verbose only so I know exactly when you look in these partials, actually let's make sure it's in partials. When I look in these partials, I know exactly what's going on with these different templates. And somebody else would as well. So now same span, same style, and color, ingredient removed. Now, of course, we could pass in additional context. I did have a little context item in here. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna just leave it as an empty dictionary, but you could leave it how you'd like. Now, if we did pass in context, we might wanna say something like title in obj.title, or well, name, and pass it from here prior to deleting the object itself so we actually can reference what was deleted, okay? So now going back in here, ingredient name removed. And let's just try it again with the salsa and ingredient salsa removed. Sweet. I think HTMX is so much fun. Anyways, that's how we can handle the leading objects with HTMX and it makes our views a little bit more robust. Now these other views can and probably should be rendered in this same way. Right, we don't really need to have two separate views in here given what you're in. Now the detail view sort of made sense in a way, um, but it also sort of doesn't. So let's go ahead and um, think about that on your own, update it on your own. We now have really covered the gambit when it comes to doing dynamic requests with HTMX. There's certainly more things that we can cover, um, but this is it for now.